What up, y'all? Uh, today, <coughs> I'm going to be uh, doing a reaction video. So a lot of people, a lot of my detractors have been <coughs> commenting on my page um, about my debate with Joey Schwartz. Oh, you're just picking on a little kid, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're trying to debate some kid. Why don't you, why don't you debate Bart K? <coughs> so I'm like, all right, who's Bart K? So I look up Bart K, and I find that Bart K has a video about Joey Schwartz. So without watching it first, I'm going to watch it now. And we're going to see what happens. Because um, in my <coughs> debates with Joey, I told him that I told him I was sent from heaven to help him uh, clean up his game. Uh, I told Joey, you know, like, you're going to be... You're going to have a lot more aggressive, hostile people going after you with a lot better information, a lot better debaters than I. So if you can't beat me in a debate, you know, I don't know what you're doing, giving people advice or trying to do debates on YouTube. It's a little strange. But I told him, you know, eventually his own people, you know, the carnivore community are going to, um, you know, go against him when they see how uh, his videos are just completely full of misinformation. And he lets basically anyone with a pulse um, who's anti-vegan on his page to spread it misinformation. And there's just utter nonsense on some of these videos. But anyway, we'll see. I, I guess this is another carnivore. And um, it'll be interesting to see his opinion of Joey because I told Joey... Man, you you know your own people are gonna turn against you if you if you don't clean up you know clean up your act. <laughs> right, thank you for joining me once again. Where I'm dealing with Joey's latest video at the behest of a number of you. I've had a number of requests to have a look at this video. Um, so a little background on Joey. He's been a YouTuber for nine months. And he has 25,000 followers and his videos get about 50,000 views, um, which is like got to be a record. Um, he's only been on the diet for six months, yet somehow he's an authority on it. So what the hell? Let's have a look at it. Uh, Joey has, as I have said a couple of times already on my channel at various times, Joey has, in my opinion, left the right course. He has left the building. He is going in the wrong direction, I believe. What? So you're trying to tell me people are already, people on Joey's side already have a problem with them? Oh. Leave to both the detriment of his own channel, I would suggest, probably. Yep. And also, ultimately, to the detriment of making sure that people get good robust sound information about diet etc like i said um joey oh exactly like i said he had such an emotional reaction when i said that it must have been because of stuff like this because he's seeing his own people turn against him he's got the most low iq anti-vegan smut page and he calls it com carnivore camaraderie because he knows the algorithm loves carnivore diet stuff on YouTube, without a doubt. So he knows he can't s sway away from that. That's why he wouldn't debate in our second debate. He wouldn't even debate me as a carnivore. He went from debating me as a carnivore to not debating me as a carnivore and then getting our second debate shut down because he wasn't following the rules of debate. Basically what's happened is that Joey has had a great deal of success very quickly with a lot of, a lot of assistance from a bunch of standard Woo! carnivore diet. Carnivores and vegans getting together. Against Joey Schwartz, a.k.a. Carnivore Camaraderie. Holy crap. This is... Woo! This is fucking great. Advisors, frankly, who have had him on their channels and promoted him and 
pointed out his articulate nature and his intelligence. Unfortunately, that's got the better of Joey, in my opinion, and his hubris and ego have got the better of him. I hope that he learns his lesson out of all of this. Holy crap. Um, because this will cost him quite significantly in his yeah. growth. No. I'm in the opinion of me with my 3,000 followers on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I could turn this guy's whole following against him. He's He's got that weak of a hand. It would not be hard. Like, I'm pretty sure Bart's probably, like, nailing the final nail in the coffin of Joey's channel. Like, if you go in the comments of Joey's videos, it's like, whew, it's like the bottom of the barrel. Um, both as a person and also as a YouTube um, creator or influencer as well. Um, you can't just come online and say whatever you want, Joey, without that being subject to some fairly robust uh, analysis of the correctness and veracity of what you have to say. Yes! That's exactly what I told Joey. And that was as a vegan. And that was even, that wasn't even as a vegan. That was like, just man, like, like, I feel bad for him. He reminds me of my son. <laughs> but he, like, he doesn't. Like, he, not his, like, personality or just, just, you know, he's just a young guy and he's just trying to figure things out, but he's got such an ego and he thinks he knows everything, but he only knows how to use conjecture. And he's got the balls enough to debate people, but he keeps getting smoky, smoked in debates. Go watch his, his debate with Nutrivore. Look up Nutrivore versus CC on YouTube and watch one of the, it's, it's hard to watch how bad Joey does in this debate. Like, Joey did better in my debate with him than he did in in way better in my debate. I let him get get away with all kinds of stuff that uh, Nutrivore, Joey just had, it was just pure silence the whole time. It was hilarious. So that's what you're going to get from yours truly, this bad bald man today. I'm sorry to do it to you, son, but it's not really me doing this to you. It's you've done it to yourself. Okay, so let's hear what Joey mm -hmm. had to say and we'll put him right where, where I think he might be wrong. Okay, off you go. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well today. Just want to preface this by saying if you want the same eat meat, drink water idea regurgitated, then go watch some other carnivore channels. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> have done in the last week or so, Joey, because a lot of people are pretty disappointed with the direction you've taken. If you want to hear the truth that they haven't realized yet. Oh, okay. My bad. My mistake, Joey. That's the thing, is it? Okay. People like me who have been studying this field. Longer than he's been alive. <laughs> like, I've been vegan longer than Joey's been alive. And Joey's got a channel. He's done zero research on the diet I've been on for longer than he's been alive. And his channel is against the diet I've been on longer than he's been, he's been alive. And he, he basically has nothing, nothing to bring to the table. Publishing, researching in this field as a scientist, as an independent scientist, as, as a senior academic in the area, for longer than you've been alive, <laughs> Joey, just haven't realized it. And you've got the answer that we don't realize. Great. Tell us what it is. Then stick around. I also want you to consider my incentives in making a video like this. This is the way I like to look at the world now. Like, what are they incentivized to do? So I want you to think about this for a second. Carnivore is blowing up right now. And I'm making a video like this that's going against a lot of the standard carnivore ideas. I could easily stick to it and grow my channel a lot more if I were to just adhere, but I'm not going to do that because I don't believe that standard carnivore diet, the average one that you are all probably doing, is right. So Okay, fine, Joey. You don't believe it's right, but on what basis? I presume that's what you're going to provide us pretty good, solid evidence for in this video. We'll give you that opportunity. I'm going to give my critiques, and I want you to really think about why I'm doing this. It's not to grow the channel. Right? I did the no, this will be costing you, Joey. Mm -hmm. This will be destroying your credibility. <clears throat> this will be slowing your growth down 
if not if not stopping it entirely. And you may even find that your subscriber base will shrink. It's literally what I told Joey. I'm like, your people aren't going to put up with this conjecture. Nothing, no scientific data behind any of the things you say. No one's going to get behind some 19-year-old kid who only drinks milk, eggs, and eats organ meat and says vitamin C isn't important and water is not important. Drink out of all of this. Because frankly, son, nobody's impressed at all with what you're doing here. Video on Ken Berry lost a lot of subscribers. There you go. Rightly so. People were angry about it. They were angry. Rightly so. Angry that I was criticizing him. Rightly so. You've got no business criticizing Ken Berry. Son, show some respect to your elders and betters. Simple as that. Or endorsing coffee. He didn't. That's a misrepresentation. That's unacceptable. I'm doing this video because I believe that what I'm going to tell you is correct. And I believe that we are not eating optimally if we're eating an only cooked meat diet. Okay, well, that's just wrong, Joey. That's fundamentally false. Absolutely false. Unequivocally false. Demonstrably false. I've so never <clears throat> agreed with a meat eater so much in my life. I believe whatever you like, son. But if that's the line, the line you're going to take, you are in the wrong. And it will cost you from conventionally raised animals. Those are gonna be the points of this video. So, okay, let's just get right into it then. If your carnivore diet consists of cooked conventionally raised ground beef, cooked eggs and pasteurized dairy, you are not eating a healthy diet. Nonsense. You notice how tired both these guys look? Show me some proof that that is so, Joey. Cause it isn't. Joey doesn't have proof for anything he says, Bart. It's just noise coming out of your mouth to be exactly. sensational in the hope that it might have some effect on your subscriber base that's positive. It's not going to some. Because nobody with more than three brain cells is going to suck the lollipop that you're offering here. The sad thing is, though, he's got thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers and his and his and his uh, chat, his live chat, and his um, <clears throat> comments are just full of some of the most ridiculous things I've ever read in my life. It's absolutely hysterical, uh, the just pure nonsense in this dude's comments. Absolutely not. Saying oh, absolutely wow. not does not make it so, Joey. Show me some proof. And the fact that people have convinced themselves that eating this way is healthy is kind of beyond me. Like, What's beyond you, Joey, is an understanding of your level of competence or lack of it, actually, in this area. You're an articulate, intelligent young man, but you are a fool and a buffoon with no... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Bart never challenges Joey's empirical data. Because I... If the empirical data would be scrutinized, uh, Bart would be uh, basically illegitimizing, illegitimizing his, himself. Um, and um, that won't be the greatest thing. So I'm going to go out on a guess and say he just kind of ad hominem attacks him the whole time. No experience, no background, no training, and no business commenting in the way that you are here. None at all. Pasteurized dairy, conventional meat, cooked foods. This is crazy, okay? No, it's not. Not at all. We've been cooking our meat for over a million... It's... It most definitely is crazy. A million years. A million years. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting. I want, to, I want to see what... What... What empirical data you have to back that up, Bart K? Joey. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Bart's probably going to do exactly what Joey does. He'll just be ad hominem attacking Joey the whole time. We are well and truly adept to it. Where's that science from, sir? In this video, I'll explain what's probably wrong with your carnivore diet, the way you're doing it, 
And says the 19 year old that's been doing the carnivore diet for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these two. <laughs> oh my God. You're this will be good to be educated by an 18 year old kid with absolutely no background or credentials of any kind. Probably not going to want to hear this, but we really don't, Joey, but we're doing it because I've been asked to be to go through this by so many people because there are so many people who are so disappointed with the direction you've taken here, son, and quite rightly so. It's really not as simple as eat meat, drink water, thrive. It really is, in fact. What a years funny ago, video to play. Maybe it would be more true. It would be at that moment. <laughs> definitely more true, but wouldn't be fully true still. But now, this is not even a good way to eat at all. Like, this is not a good diet. So, but you've said that, but you've provided no evidence whatsoever in support of that. So it's incredibly ironic to me that people go carnivore to eat a natural diet, and yet they. Natural diet. That word again, natural. Most misused word in the in the history of the world. They eat feedlot beef, the most unnatural uh, conditions. Joey's admitted he gets all his meat from the from the local supermarket, under which the animal is placed. In many of his videos, yes, it's not ideal to have beef in feedlots. It doesn't make a huge difference to the nutritional profile of the meat. That of course it does. Are you kidding? That comes from those animals, in fact. It makes some difference, but not a huge difference. Um, that I actually, <clears throat> actually I'll, I'll I take you... that back. It does make a difference. It does make it not as good, but there isn't overall a huge difference because they're both complete crap. That that point that it's not ideal nonetheless any diet consisting of the meat of and associated fat of feedlot animals is still vastly superior to any diet which does not contain sufficient meat and animal fat incorrect without a doubt factually incorrect across the board nonsense Nothing in science backs those statements up in the least bit. And indeed probably contains too much plant material and contraindicated <clears throat> glucose, fructose, and glucose starch. Hell yeah. Which is and things like that, Joey. Hell yeah. It's, it's kind of very, very strange to me. The whole idea, at least from what I've gotten, is that we can't outsmart our bodies. So why do we think that we can put animals in these horrible environments and we can still reap the benefits of good nutrition from them? Because the nutrition we get from feedlot animals is still pretty damn good. I'm going to send Joey a message right now. I'm going to take a picture of this. <laughs> and say, told you so. We'll see what he says. Hopefully he'll respond while I'm still making the video. There isn't a huge problem with it, Joey. We can't do that even close to the amount. Obviously, for choice, if you can access and easily afford grass-fed meat, you would, you would eat that in preference to feedlot meat. Absolutely. Yeah, but... The thing is with grass-fed is that the, uh, the, the grain-fed animals don't have to, uh, like, you, you, it takes far more grass because uh, grain has more nutri nutrition, nut blech, nutrients in it than grass does. So grain-fed animals are, are more sustainable as far as, um, you know, uh, space and land and... Um, grazing space goes um grass-fed is the least um efficient and least sustainable way of of feeding animals 
Um, uh, but these people don't care because it's a little bit better for you. But this is not a major issue. This is a one percenter. Out we could from good animals, and I'm going to get into this a bit more in the good next few animals. minutes. But I just encourage you to ponder the question: Are farmers smarter than nature? Are these farmers who are putting these cows into deplorable conditions smarter than nature? What has that got to do with nutrition, Joey, in any way, shape, or form, and the nutritional profile of the meat we get from these animals? You're sounding like an ideologue, son. Oh, that's projecting. <laughs> it's all carnivores are ideologues. It's not good. It's not a good look at all, Joey. Mm -mm. That's why I told Joey. I told Joey because of what he down to what he named his channel. He can't side with the truth. He can only side with carnivorism, even if he finds out in his research that, that it's bad to do what he's doing or anything's bad about it. He won't change because he's carnivore camaraderie. And if he lose, if he changes that, he won't be in the carnivore algorithm anymore and he won't have his followers anymore. And he won't have his little 15 minutes of fame that he's drunk with. You make yourself look like a loon. Sorry about that. And yeah. the answer is no. Okay. So feedlot beef, a lot of these animals are grazed on pasture but not for the whole time. So mm -hmm. in the last year or so, the cows tend to no longer graze. In this. Instead, they're put in feedlots and they're fed trash. No, they're, they're, they go graze and then they go to a feedlot and they eat grain uh, supplement, supplemented food. They don't get all their food from, from, from grass, bro. Like this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. They still supplement grass-fed animals with grain. So... I don't know what where he's getting his information. Like the stuff that humans don't eat uh, from the corn, the grains, the soy, the stuff that what that isn't suitable for us. So, oh, so we got more opinion in here. Not suitable corn and soy. That's weird. So because of what conventionally raised cattle eat in the latter parts of their lives, when you eat this meat and dairy, you're intaking pesticides, herbicides, yep. GMO residue, yep. antibiotics, steroids. Much of the meat you, you eat, <clears throat> correct, is full of that. You live in Westwood, California. You don't have access to anything but that. Estrogen, other hormones. Yes, that can't be avoided in, in today's society, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Joey. Jeez. Doesn't mean any of those things are indicated or a good thing necessarily at all. In fact, that's it's like the same conversation going on. <laughs> they almost certainly are not. However, I would challenge you to provide a single piece of peer-reviewed empirical evidence proving any of those things are remotely significantly problematic to the population in any way. Shall we wait? Perhaps not. We won't wait because we'll be waiting all day for such evidence. Joey Ideology doesn't know how to research here from Joey. <clears throat> evidence. Very I'm sure I could probably dig something up on one of those, I'm sure. So that sounds like a pretty bold claim, but... The very thing that we here in this actually sensibly, scientifically based community rail against. We are not interested in your ideology, check, check. son. This is not good stuff. This is, a lot of people talk about... This is all, all an argument equalize. against himself. Equalize a product of a... This is all an argument of him that, that can be used against himself. Corn-based diet in cows that creates acidosis in the bovine rumen. That's one potential yeah. route by which E. coli might enter the food chain. In fact... And that's E. coli enters the food chain through cross-contamination with meat, with animal products. So people actually that eat salad will get E. coli because... The the uh, mis mishandling of the uh, the produce, you know, somewhere along the way. But E. coli and these these problems, these foodborne sicknesses, don't come from fruits and vegetables. They come only from meat. And it's funny to see Joey using this in as some sort of argument for his BS diet when you can get E. coli from anything that is around anything with meat. 
and is only found from meat. So why would why would you believe the natural diet was of a of something that gives us foodborne illnesses? Like that makes no sense. You don't get that with fruits and vegetables. You get that, you know, when you see the uh, the e-, e. coli outbreaks, it's usually on some sort of lettuce or cabbage, but it's not from lettuce or cabbage. It's from touching chicken and garbage somewhere along the way. Joey, if you did any research at all, you'd find out the most common causes of E. coli infection in human beings are directly from eating plant material infected with E. coli. Infected from E. coli from animals. See, this is a really good example of Carnus cherry picking, omitting, and using doublespeak. He knows damn well. It doesn't come from eating vegetables. Vegetables are cross-contaminated with animal products. That's how they get E. coli. Okay. Um, this condition allows acid-resistant E. coli to develop. Um, so a Cornell st- study actually found that switching cattle from grain to hay for the last two weeks of their lives reduced E. coli. And um, the chances of contracting. There's also studies, meta studies, better studies than that one study you're talking about, that one, you know, like trial that that say that lowering animal consumption raises your uh, your lowers mortality by 30 percent. So, you know, what what studies from that school are you cherry picking? E. coli from 100 percent grass fed beef are like none. Like basically not. So people grass fed isn't sustainable. Grass fed cows need like six times more pasture than uh, than grain fed cows and grain fed cows uh, get a get a, uh, you know, and, and your grass fed is still supplemented grain. People are worried about um, raw meat. No, no, you don't worry about the raw meat. You worry about the source of the meat to make sure it's healthy meat. Next, mad cow disease. What people don't know Joey, about Joey in his videos admits he gets his meat from the supermarket. That is where you would get contaminated with all of these things. He did a live stream the other day, like three, four, five days ago, where he told they're like, Where do you get your meat from? He's all, I just get it from the supermarket. <laughs> this is that when you eat the brain of a grass fed animal, you can't, whether it's raw or cooked, you're not going to get um, mad cow disease. The thing is, if you cook the brain of So I had to do that once when I was debating Joey because we were debating for 10 minutes about how he has like he literally has scurvy and he's like, oh, I don't I don't need any more vitamin C because I get all my vitamin C in my meat. And, you know, history's wrong about scurvy. Scurvy actually comes from eating vegetables and all this BS. And it's like, dude, so we're back in like the, the 17th, 15th, 15th century with diet information here. It's OK to go out, go without citrus and vitamin C. It's totally cool. Just eat your hard tack, <clears throat> eat your hard tack, eat your dried meat. And that's it. And you'll just be fine on any sailing ship for years at sea. You'll just you'll just be fine. All the scurvy's not a real thing. Pirates didn't get scurvy. Pirates didn't get scurvy back in the day. Sailors didn't get scurvy. That's not why they're like missing teeth and stuff. Like it's it's totally totally An crazy. An animal that was not grass fed, you're way more likely. It's okay. You can get mad cow's disease, but just you know you know to get the mad cow disease since you can't. Joey's going to get mad cow disease, he's going to get scurvy, he's going to get diabetes, he's going to get heart disease, all of these things by the time he's in his mid-20s, if he keeps this up. You can't destroy it with heat. You can't destroy what's causing mad cow disease with heat. Okay? Um, antibiotics. So... Okay, then don't eat it, idiot. <laughs> what's the prevalence of mad cow disease in the population, Joey? Is mad cow disease a significant issue? At the moment? At all? No? Okay. So, obviously, feedlot, feedlot life for cattle is horribly stressful. Yeah, you've mentioned that, and we agree it's not ideal. Full. Because the diet that they eat and the concentration of penned animals lead to numerous health problems, Sure. the feedlot cattle are given antibiotics so they don't contract fatal diseases. 
yeah, you'll find that grass fed and grass finished cattle for food production are also given. I just looked up uh, mad cow disease very much is still an issue in our society. Antibiotics, Joey. <laughs> so you're not going to avoid the antibiotics by avoiding the feedlot beef. Sorry about that. Antibiotics are also given to promote growth. They also to all cows. Cows aren't supposed to look like how they do, Joey. So receive growth hormones, the omega all cows. Six to three ratio is totally out of whack. No, it isn't. It's just slightly out of whack, in fact. Glyphosate is sprayed on the meat that is not organic. So most most meat is obviously not organic. So if you're not eating organic meat, you're getting glyphosate in you. Because the glyphosate is sprayed on the food that the glyphosate is an environmental toxin, Joey. Yeah. It's very, very difficult to avoid coming into contact with glyphosate on our earth today, son. What's your point? How eats a uh, glyphosate? I did a video on it. It's extremely dangerous. Maybe one of the most dangerous agriculture innovations in the last century. Um, extremely harmful. <clears throat> So why is glyphosate then the most used of the herbicides around all corners of the world? I mean, I'm not saying it's great stuff. It absolutely isn't great stuff, but you're making it out to be... This is not a great argument. ...vastly more, <laughs> immediately more dangerous than it actually demonstrably is, Joey. I think. Have you provided any evidence in your video about glyphosate? Any experimental evidence on human beings? Any cause and effect data that shows it's definitely exactly bad for what you. the problems of glyphosate are? Definitely bad for you. Glyphosate are. And what the prev Not the greatest argument, man. Influence of these problems are in the population. You may have done, I don't know. You can look at studies online showing that the aforementioned toxic components of conventional beef are benign. You could believe those if you want, but why on earth would you believe those? The meat and dairy industries are incentivized to make you believe that in the same way the government- Right, so yeah, more ideology. <laughs> okay. Holy cow. And Wait, what I gotta go back to this. Meat and dairy industries are incentivized to make you believe that in the same way the government... Right, so yeah, more ideology. Okay. And what studies are you talking about, Joey? You haven't cited any studies. <laughs> Ergo, there's no... Joey, along with every other carnivore, doesn't cite any studies because there's no science available that backs their claims. There's a hundred plus years of meta studies and metadata available for that says the plant-based diet is far more healthy than uh, an omnivorous meat-based diet. No substance to your rambling at the moment. You need to provide studies that say whatever you want to suggest those studies say. Agreed, like I asked him to do in our debate, which you could go watch, and he was not able to do that. So that we can look at those studies and make our own decision about whether or not those studies are of good quality and veracity. That's what Joey can't. That's why Joey changed our debate is because he couldn't do that uh, because there is no study available that uh, that proves anything either of you are saying. Some of us have a background in that area, Joey. Some of us have a lot of experience in so doing and others don't, okay? government is incentivized to make you believe that they want you to think that the conventional agricultural practices are fine and healthy. Same thing I've said to a lot of other presenters, Joey, on these videos, put your hands in your pocket when you're presenting. And all is, all is good, right? They want you to think that because if you come to the realization, if you come to the true understanding that the conventional meat is bad, we have a huge problem on our hands. We have a huge problem because all- Except we don't, because there's no evidence that we do have a significant problem on our hands, Joey. If there was a significant problem, it would show up. These guys are both so slow. 
It doesn't. Why is that, do you think? Meat is conventionally grown, essentially, like over 95% of it. Not in this country. In the country I live in, all the meat is grass-fed all year round. At all times. There are, there are no feedlots. At all. That's not an argument. Oh. So again, if you'd done your research, Joey, you'd have known that. He's not talking about in the UK, wherever you're from, or Bart. So we have a big problem on our hands. Of course they want you to think that the non-organic meat is, is healthy, and that the glyphosate and the antibiotics don't matter. Of course they want you to think that, right? Don't fall into that trap. Or look for the research that shows otherwise. Shall we wait? I'm not suggesting any of those things are a good thing, by the way. Once again, let me repeat it. I'm not saying that at all. However, there is no reason whatsoever to avoid grain-finished, grain-fed beef. Absolutely is. There's literally hundreds of reasons to avoid that. If that's what you can access and that's what you can afford, it's still nutritionally, has a perfectly adequate profile that is not significantly less quality than grass-fed. Where's your science to back that up, sir? You're asking Joey, where's my cricket button? Reet, 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 reet. Neither is it significantly less polluted with toxins the grass-fed as compared to the grain. Correct. It is a little bit, but not far off. It's all shit. At all. This is not safe meat to eat. So you've said... No meat is safe meat to eat, Joey. You're right. But you haven't actually established that whatsoever, Joey, with any evidence of any kind. It's just your opinion. Your 19-year-old opinion based on absolutely nothing. nothing. And then for those of you who additionally say prioritize the fat in these animals that are conventionally raised, well, that's, that's dangerous. Again, based on what? Because if it's feedlot beef, that's where the toxins come. Based on hundreds of years of empirical data, the most highest quality meta studies science has proves that eating that is garbage and will do nothing but shorten your life. Concentrate. They don't concentrate in the protein. They concentrate. Toxins concentrate in fat tissues of all animals. Joey, all of them. Concentrate in the fat. Just make sure you eat meat that is organic. Ideally pastured, grass-fed, and finished. Just, no need. Just organic is really, really... It's all shit. Even this guy says there's no need. No, yeah. it isn't. You've been fooled, Joey. If you think organic is significantly better than non-organic anything, you have been fooled. Yep. No antibiotics. So many meat eaters swear by their, oh, I get or the organic grass fed or I get it from the Amish. It's all shit. There's no difference. Here's one of your carnivore gods saying so. About his articulate nature and his intelligence. Oh, no. Wait, but not much, frankly. Organic. Ideally pastured, grass-fed, and finished. Quality than grass-fed. Neither is it significantly less polluted with toxins, the grass-fed, as compared to the grain. At all. This is not safe meat to eat. So you've said, but you haven't actually established that whatsoever, Joey, with any evidence of any kind. It's just your opinion. Your 19-year-old opinion based on absolutely nothing. And then for those of you who additionally say prioritize the fat in these animals that are conventionally raised, well, that's, <laughs> that's dangerous. Again, based on what? Because if it's feedlot beef, that's where the co toxins concentrate. They don't concentrate in the protein. They con Toxins concentrate in fat tissues of all animals. Yeah. You can literally, you can cut the fat out of a human being and they could look at the fat and tell you what kind of animal it came from. That's really gross. <laughs> All of them. The trait in the fat. Just make sure you eat meat that is organic. Ideally pastured, grass-fed, and finished. Just, no need. Just organic is really, really key. No, yeah. it isn't. You've been fooled, Joey. If you think organic is significantly better than non-organic anything, you have been fooled.
no antibiotics. I believe those are synonymous, maybe not though. No, they're not. Nobody is going to sell you beef commercially that has not been subject to treatment with antibiotics. It's illegal. Um, now that I've addressed conventional meats. You haven't. You've said some words because you felt like it. Can that problem simply be fixed by eating cooked ground beef from a grass-finished organic source plus the grass-finished pasteurized dairy and cooked organic eggs from chickens that are pastured? No, that, the diet that I just described is not good either. It, it's really not good. You said that twice within a couple of seconds, and you supported that assertion zero times. More words, Joey. It fixes a problem, but it doesn't fix the whole entire problem. It's a, there's more to it than just that. The next problem is too much cooked meat. Nonsense. Absolute, utter nonsense. Rubbish. Now, people then go ahead and say, well, how about the Inuit? How about the Maasai? Cooked meat <clears throat> is uh, what gives you colon cancer. Burnt fat cells ending up in your colon and then not eating enough fiber, ve fibrous foods, vegetables, and fruit to, to flush your colon out. That's why you get cancer. Um, you know, the Inuit didn't live past 50. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to live only to 50. That was, that means I have five years left on this planet. So I'm not going to listen to Joey, you know, citing cherry picking our ancestors, you know, history to fit his bullshit agenda. The Inuit ate only raw meat, basically. So, so yeah, and they died of heart disease by, by the tons and they, and they didn't only eat raw meat. They ate grains too. Joey just assumes that these people didn't get anything but they still were trading with the mainland like they still brought in resources they still had places where they had dried food they just mostly ate meat joey doesn't know this because he's 19 years old and has no life experience that's out the window you want to eat a natural diet yes and natural there's nothing natural about cooking meat we've been doing it for over a million years joey you know it's not cooked meat Yes, it is. We've been doing it for over a million years. Citation, please. Done. But at least not exclusively. Yes, exclusively. A lot of tribes, a lot of human beings, have for hundreds of thousands at least, if not millions of years, cooked all their meat. Yes. The Maasai eat like 60% raw milk and raw So what? Who cares what the Maasai do? They are one tribe of people. Living the Maasai... Uh cook a lot of their food in pumpkin and they have uh you know they're, they're not only eating meat joey is just simply making things up when he says that in africa and the maasai are uh you know like 0.002 percent of the population of the world living in a completely different place and a different, completely different content continent living in emergency situation, like life or death living out in the desert. You know, that is where, that is why humans have the ability to eat meat is because life or death situations, not to eat it every day. Obviously. Human beings populate the entire planet, Joey. There are seven and a half billion of us. We don't all behave like the Maasai. What's your point? Raw blood. So you think that you're doing your cooked meat diet with even if it's these are all the same arguments Joey uses over and over and over and over and over again, and he can't prove a single one of them. Grass fed, grass finished beef. You think that's natural or ancestral? It's, it's not. He's drooling. It is, Joey, in fact, and no amount of you saying it isn't changes the fact that it still is nor it, it, even if it was you're appealing to tradition just because we've done something for a long time doesn't mean a it's the right way of doing it or b we should continue to do it fallacies people these aren't these aren't arguments this isn't proof this isn't evidence it's conjecture and fallacy absolutely natural and absolutely in line with the genetic design of, well, it seems like probably four and a half million years. Where do you get the science to back that up, sir? Of both positive and negative selection pressures. The meat and fat of large ruminant animals cooked. Citation, please. 
everything ain't everything. All the best data we have about health says to lower or eliminate your meat intake. Uh, even by the Messiah and Inuit standards, it's not at all. Um, I so actually, more it's like Joey. Joey seems like he's, I mean, he is getting paid to do this channel. It's like he was gifted the channel and told, this is your job now. You have to defend all this stuff. It's like it's not in his heart. He interviews people and he doesn't even listen to them. He shows up to, to debates unprepared and just gets upset and, 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 you know, ad hominem attacks and and uses fallacies and conjecture and rolls his eyes and says, everyone knows this, yet he can't find a single good piece of good study, high quality study to back any of the things he says. More noise, more words from Joey, mm -hmm. still absolutely nothing to support any of his claims whatsoever. OK, he had an issue of my own with too much cooked meat. and I didn't tell anyone this. No, you didn't. But I Joey's also going through puberty and he points at his uh, at the at the his his own natural body changing. He points at that and says, this is because I'm carnivore. My jawline has filled out because of carnivore. My 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 voice is getting deeper because of carnivore. Because <laughs> because if eating gizzards and uh, and like milk and eggs I'm all tell day. It now. And raw eggs. I've already heard this, but it's just, it's laughable. So let's hear it so we can laugh. Brushing my teeth at one point, and I was brushing, and I was just tons of blood. Like Right. So you had bleeding gums. Yeah, everyone does okay. sometimes. So much blood in my mouth. I hadn't ever had this before. It was right. just tons of blood. And it happened, yeah, you said that. It happened for the next few days. Yep, okay. It didn't stop until I started eating raw meat. I was... So? Did you then withdraw the raw meat and see if the, the bleeding came back again for some reason? No? Well, then you haven't done an experiment, have you, Joe? You said this was associated with that. Holy so what? shit. I was, getting, I was in the early stages of scurvy. No, you weren't, Joey, at all. Nonsense. Yes, he was. And he does have scurvy to this day. And he's also diabetic. If he took an oral glucose test, he would fail. Did you get a medical diagnosis of scurvy? No, he's Joey's scared to get his blood work done, just like every other carnivore. No? Okay. Good. There are hundreds of things that could cause bleeding of the gums. True. But if, if, if your diet consists of only eating meat and no fruit, and your, your, tongue, your teeth start, your gums start bleeding for multiple days, then you have scurvy. Sir, there's a good chance, at least, but, you know, come on. Including not brushing your teeth every day, Joey, which is something that you have previously mentioned as being a, a chronic behavior. Yep. Joey slips up and tells everything, like, on his live streams. He just says whatever and totally contradicts himself over and over and over again. A change in your diet from one thing to another thing can cause that because of the oral biota issue, for example. You may have had an infection causing an issue in your gums. So not only does Joey have absolutely no background and no empirical data, only like half-ass antidote anecdote and conjecture in nutritional physiology or anything like that or any background of any kind at all or even no. in life experience no. now exactly. he imagines himself competent to make medical diagnoses as well oh okay we just don't understand that joey you're, you're right how bad <laughs> and people like to make a joke out of this you know you know carnivore can't cause scurvy whatever whatever you don't get scurvy on carnivore joey that's a well established sure you fact sure you do irrefutable fact you're where's the science to back that up sir Where's the science to back that up? Irrefutable. That means you have some sort of evidence to back that up, which you don't. There is not one single established case of scurvy attributable in human beings eating a fully carnivorous diet anywhere in the literature.
Uh, nonsense. Google it right now. Carnivore diet scurvy. Tons of people. Sure. Not one. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes, it can. It can. A fully carnivorous diet, you'd struggle to get scurvy, frankly, but it is possible. However... Why would you want to do a diet where you might get scurvy? <laughs> or where people often get scurvy? That's what's batshit about what's going on here, people, is the complete reverting to the 1500s diet. Like, like we knew this in the 1500s that you need to take. That's why they brought so many oranges to the, to the west and the east coast of California, because you need vitamin C to survive. <sighs> It's biblical even. I mean, not that I'm appealing to the Bible, but the, the golden apples, those were oranges. That was vitamin C, people. It does not Apple. happen. because Apples are not golden. If it did happen to any significant level, it would show up in the literature as such. It doesn't. Not one case, Joey. Zero. Okay? What Less than one. literature, sir, are you citing when you say that it would show up in the literature? What literature? What study is out there? That's a study of the carnivore diet and whether or not scurvy happens within the carnivore diet or not. Please cite that. I want, I want, to, I want to read that meta study. <laughs> um, what's next? Of course. It what was that face? Because as I'm going to get into. Less than one. <laughs> what's next? Of course it can. Because. As I'm going to get into, these nutrients are heat sensitive. Vitamin C is extremely heat sensitive. Okay, Simon, before you start talking about vitamin C, I think you should go to school and learn something about vitamin C. Because clearly you haven't done. Okay? And I wasn't even eating fully cooked meat. I was just doing a quick sear on my steaks. Well, which makes it even less likely. I was not getting enough vitamin C from the meat, and so I developed... You, how do you know that? You did not have scurvy, Joey. early stages of scurvy i also had other symptoms that were representative of scurvy uh, such as joey's admitting he's he had signs and symptoms of scurvy and i'm pretty sure in my debate with him he says that you you don't get scurvy from being carnivore and that that you get all the vitamin c you need from eel only eating meat but then I've seen Joey say that he eats fruit now. So are you worried about the scurvy symptoms you got? Is that why you started eating berries? Sure seems like it. Contradiction number 7,000. Like sort of in the early stages. Of course, Such as? That's gone now. I eat wrong. Such as? I mean, totally fine. Feeling better. But it, it wasn't good. You know, Joey thinks feeling better is a marker of health. Drugs make you feel good. Any, anything can make you feel good. Your body uses endorphins to make you feel good when you're unhealthy or you have some sort of injury. It will numb the pain. Feeling good is not a marker of health. No, it really was not good. Eating only Bleeding gums can be quite distressing for a young man. <clears throat> you've never experienced that before for any reason. However... You're not qualified to make medical diagnoses, Joey. You did not have scurvy, I can promise you. Oh, no, he did. Scurvy was not. Scurvy happens when you get rid of fruit in your diet, and Joey got rid of fruit in his diet, and within a few months got scurvy. Not the issue, I can promise you. And eating raw, Cite that. raw meat was not the solution either. I can promise you that too. That's definitely true. Thank you, sir. That is definitely true. Raw meat did not cure Joey of scurvy, nor does it cure you of anything. Meat consumption only ails you. These things were associated with the onset and offset of your bleeding. Of course, if you're on a desert island, different study, different situation, emergency situation, life and death, we can get away with it, but not eating it. Only, only eating meat all day, every day gums episode that you had nothing to do with it okay associated What's no next? it did only cooked meat for some people could be fine 
but I think my threshold for vitamin C is just higher. Why would that be, Joey? Do you have significantly different DNA, organ systems, or design than any other human being? Because we're all 99. This is the argument I use against most people, too. Most most carnivores. This is funny how many of this guy's, my, my arguments this guy uses. 99 something percent identical, Joey, in that regard. Hmm? So how, how am I able to be vegan for over three quarters of my life? Um, and, and you say it's impossible <clears throat> to, uh, to thrive as a vegan. And there are, uh, you know, thousands of vegan athletes, uh, f millions of successful vegans. Well, there are many unsuccessful vegans because most fad dieters don't, uh, you know, take veganism to heart because they're only doing it to lose some weight. So, yeah, they lose a little bit of weight and they fall off again. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't deny, you can't be a smart, intelligent person and deny the fact that professional vegan athletes exist and that there are plenty of people living very old, uh, vegan, you know, like it's just, it's too funny, you know? And so if we're a hunt 99% the same, you know, how can you say that the vegan diet is so detrimental to health if if there are so many examples of humans thriving off of it like we aren't all uh um we aren't all anorexic like you guys think like you guys love cherry picking anorexics and saying oh look at these vegans like no that's an eating disorder just like only eating meat all the time now you have to be special in some way of course you are and so like, are you going to say that I'm lying? Like, what I say? No, I'm going to say you're completely mistaken and completely out of your depth. Talking now, well beyond the scope of your training, your competence, your expertise, or your life experience, son. That's what I'm Agreed. saying. Agreed. And I'm also saying that it's not a good idea to bite the hand that feeds you, because that's what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. You have received a lot of support and help from... Joey is... Joey's head is getting a little too big for his life experience. He thinks because he's got a successful channel and a bunch of half-wit yes-men surrounding him that he can challenge uh, the status quo and just make these, these, these like shots in the dark um, to try and sound different than all of these other YouTubers. Because when me and Joey were debating, I told him, I'm like, you're you're, you know, you're, how are you going to make yourself different than these guys, you know, outside of not exercising and not working out and like these other things that all these guys do. And like, he's just, he's trying to, he's, he's, he's letting his ego get a hold of, uh, you know, let him lead him down the wrong path, which is what 19 year olds do. The, uh, mature, experienced and knowledgeable commentators in this area to help you build your channel very quickly, precisely because you came across as intelligent and articulate, and that was something that we thought would be useful to the community. Unfortunately, though, you've now completely lost the plot. Completely lost the plot. <laughs> I told him. I literally told Joey, go and watch it in our debate. I told him, your people are going to turn on you, bro, if you don't get better and stop using conjecture and false false facts all the time like you can do your channel without lying to people joey but if you do your channel and lie to people smart people are going to turn on you this is what i told you okay people say you know carnivore diets cause scurvy all the vegans say that well they're wrong this is not one thing you just admitted you almost got scurvy and yes if you don't eat fruits and vegetables you will get scurvy eventually case of it anywhere in the literature and what literature sir what meta studies are you citing that that are that are reproducible studies upon studies of studies meta studies of studies what what science are you using when you say that sir and there's actual stories to back that up are you going to say that they're lying stories and anecdote are worth nothing the bottom they are at the bottom of the hierarchy of scientific evidence bottom opinion papers opinion papers letters case reports below that stories anecdotes
My friend did this. I did this and this happened. That's the weakest information available to us versus meta-analysis and systemic reviews, which are which are an analysis of analysis, studies of studies, studies of thousands and thousands of cases uh, over up to 150, 200 years. So where where are we here? Because you guys are all down here and the plant-based community is all up here. Yet you guys say in the literature, you know, you have all the answers. It just doesn't make sense, sir. Oh, anecdotes, though. There's anecdotes. And anecdotes, as we all know, boys and girls, are absolutely hardcore science, aren't they? Hmm. Good sake. You are using antidote also, sir. Antidotes are the lowest form of science, and you use them also. All these arguments you're using against Joey can be used for you, sir. Really some anecdotes? Okay. I don't think so. I think it's too much cooked meat. Well, who cares what you think, Joey? You have no basis to give an opinion on this. None at all. You are completely out of He's actually right. It is too much cooked meat. You're lame. Now, here I'm going to show a couple actual stories of people getting... Stories are just anecdotes, opinion, misdiagnoses. Gervy from... No. Eating too much cooked meat. No, you're not. Not at all. And here we go. We got a Klaus from Plant Based News. This bloke has zero credibility. None at all. This guy is bought and paid. Neither of you have credibility. For by shake bin bin shake bin bin shake bin shake in the bag or whatever. The only reason the two of you have YouTube channels is because the powers that be chose the algorithm to 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 go out to chose the word carnivore as an algorithm they wanted YouTube to promote. The algorithm doesn't just promote whatever is successful. It promotes what the people that run YouTube want it to promote. And carnivore is huge. Look at Joey. His name is. This is a well-known vagoon. This is also a boy in short pants. I'm sure he's a slightly older than you are, Joey, but not much, frankly. Mentally, I think he'd struggle to even meet your level, frankly. This is not a bloke who's going to provide any credible story, let alone any scientific evidence of anything. But let's hear him out. Go, Klaus. <laughs> the lack of nutrition got the better of him, however, when it took... Bro, just pay for a YouTube premium. Like, are you kidding? You have a YouTube channel. It's $15. Then you won't have that happen anymore. Come on, Bart. You can afford it doctor a few weeks later revealed i'm sure you're probably not making money from this channel yet it was developing symptoms of scurvy i just lived on mince some chicken um maybe some mayonnaise is a little bit of uh you know and and it took me about so why isn't this in the medical literature then as a case study because it is case studies are not high on the hierarchy of scientific evidence so why do you keep asking for case studies that's down here. Case reports at the bottom. The weakest of all scientific literature are case studies. Sir, why would you want to look at that? Why wouldn't you want to look at the meta analyses and what they say up here? I am so confused about this with you carnivores. You guys don't seem to understand how these studies work. It's wild. Like, no one went to high school debate class. I didn't. But I still know this stuff. <laughs> There's not one, Joey. This is a blow. Oh my god, this you is so slow. I gotta turn it up some, even more. Some sympathies for the vegan ideal, the vegan this lifestyle. This dude talks so slow! I imagine has been offered some money by Shake Bin Shake Bin Shake in the Bag and Klaus to come on this little channel and tell his little story. This is not an establishment of a case of something occurring. If you talk really slow, it, 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 it makes it seem like you're sitting there trying to think of things to say, um, that you don't really have your thoughts collected. Um, you know, you're supposed to... You know, it looks very 
looks a lot better when you speak a little bit faster. You know, like this 10-minute long to get out two sentences. It doesn't seem like you're that with it, bro. In anybody at all. Eight, six straight weeks to get very, very unhealthy. See a doctor who then said, I think you've got the symptoms of scurvy. Well, I think you've got the symptoms of scurvy. Is that a diagnosis? No. From a doctor? Yes! <laughs> These guys. These guys love just cherry picking science and denying science when it doesn't support their bullshit agenda. And then they they demand to see. They demand this guy demands to see case studies. Opinion papers and letters, literally the weakest form of science. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My cousin is actually now recovering from his stint of eating the carnivore diet and has been recommended by a doctor to switch immediately to a vegan diet. Well, number one, doctors have no business by virtue of being doctors in suggesting dietary interventions of any kind to anybody that is not their area of training or expertise at all. And number two, any doctor or any other person promoting a vegan diet immediately removes any sense of credibility they may have had. Their credibility from that point forward becomes zero. The, the vegan diet is the most destitute diet possible for human beings in terms of nutrients. Why? Because after several months without eating any fruit, he developed scurvy. Yes, that's possible. So if you're still eating carbohydrates of some kind, eat a meat-only diet, you won't have a problem with scurvy. Scurvy is an old disease nearly eradicated from humanity until recently. As this study titled Infantile Scurvy, A Historical Perspective, points out the increased prevalence, the increased incidence rather of infantile scurvy during the period was attributed. Which period, Joe? Attributed to the usage of heated milk and propri proprietary. Attributed by who? On what basis? And in what period of time? What do you expect us to get from this? This, this seems to be looking at between the 14th and 16th centuries. That's what it says in the first, uh, first line. That's what I'm talking about. Number two there. Foods. It was the heating of the milk that started to increase the incidence of scurvy. No, that's not what it said. It said it was attributed to that, but it didn't say by whom and on, and on what basis. Neither are we talking about what period of time we're talking about here and what the diet consisted of outside of the milk for these infants. Pasteurizing milk. That's what did it. That is no, that's a guess, Joey. That's a complete guess on your part. My you guys are all guessing. Every carnivore influencer who makes a video and makes claims that eating meat all day and not eating fruits and vegetables is good is guessing, sir. Unless you have some meta analysis or metadata for me to look at. Mind blowing. Right? What's mind blowing is that you're putting this information or this misinformation forward as if it's supported some way. Thank you. That is the correct information, misinformation. You haven't supported it. You are speculating. Correct word. That is mind blowing. We start. You said that already. Why are you repeating yourself? Is it the brain fog that seems to. It's called lipemia, actually. Um, lipemia is when you eat a high fat diet and um, fat actually clogs to the receptors that send um, oxygen to your brain and it causes this thing called lipemia and where it makes your brain stop working basically starving yourself in your in your in your skull starving your brain immediately start to accrue to people who abuse their bodies with too much carbohydrates and indeed take either too much organ meats or indeed organ supplements Joey perhaps I don't know well, cooking is my speculation for you thanks <clears throat> and I eat a pure carnival I, I eat a pure carbohydrate high carb diet and uh, i i could assure you i could smoke mr k here at uh any physical challenge pretty much it's it's really goes up significantly show some evidence for that and then show us a causal link between those two things so under control and observation over a decent period of time in human subjects vitamin c actually begins to, to denature at temperatures as low as 86 degrees fahrenheit so? according to a study in the Inter international journal of scientific and technology research so <sighs> More case, man, more case studies. That's all Joey has. Joey thinks that these case studies are concrete science when uh, they're purely, they're, they're educated guesses. The negative effects of heat increase significantly at 140 degrees and even more at 100. And then you got to look at a lot of these studies and who's, who supplied the, the, uh, the, the money to these studies. And it turns out that a lot of supplement companies are doing it. And so it's really, you, you have to really dive in um and read these reports and learn how to read them and learn how to r read the uh the graphs and all that <clears throat> uh be because like you can't just cite them and expect that to like 
you know, without actually knowing exactly what kind of people were, you know, like all the details are very important. Fahrenheit. So? So again, I, I want to bring back to this main point. No, no. So, is there sufficient vitamin C in well done muscle meat of large ruminant animals? Yes. How do I know that? Because I don't have fucking scurvy. And that's pretty much all I eat, Joey. Okay? We're done here. You haven't got it yet. But you will. You'll also, you're also probably pre-diabetic. Pre if you took an oral glucose test, you would fail. You're clearly not done that. You've still got about half your video left, for goodness sake. What can you possibly have to say here? You have YouTubers who are saying that carnivore can't cause scurvy. I... It doesn't, Joey. They say it doesn't because it doesn't. I said that myself. I was, <laughs> I was dumb. You are dumb now, Joey. Incredibly dumb now. Scurvy comes from lack of vitamin C. You're an intelligent articulate. Just because there's some vitamin C in me does not mean that it's enough or a sufficient amount or that that low amount is sufficient or that you wouldn't get more benefit from having more vitamin C. Young man, by the way you're behaving... Just because you're barely not getting scurvy, you're missing out on thousands of other benefits of, vi of, a high, of taking high vitamin C. At the moment, it's incredibly dumb. It's These people literally think vitamin C is poison. Ridiculous. But if that's true, then why are people getting scurvy on carnivore? They're not, Joey. That's they are. They absolutely are. Google carnivore scurvy. That's the whole point. There is not one single established case of scurvy in a person who is adherent to 100% carnivorous diet anywhere in the literature. Not one. What literature, sir? What literature are you citing? Still. Are you going to say that they're lying? No. No, I'm going to say what I exactly just said. There are no cases reported and um, corroborated. What I think Bart is saying is that there has been not there has been none found in science. There's never been a fully carnivorous study where they found someone to get scurvy. That is what Bart, I think, is saying. So he's saying that these thousands of people may, that are getting scurvy from the from eating carnivore and, and missing out on uh, fruits and vegetables, he's saying that that is an undiagnosed problem and we can't say that it's scurvy that's what bart is saying right here that is orwellian doublespeak that is like like serious like uh like a like <clears throat> like a really 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 deceptive um way of t uh, of of communicating basically by medical professionals anywhere in the literature it's like politician stuff you know like whoa what are you saying dude not one it's too much cooked meat no, it isn't. No, you may think that the risks. Of yes, it is. Too much cooked meat is the problem for the majority of the health problems in the United States of America comes from too much cooked meat. A poor carnivore diet can be attenuated with colon cancer. The number one killer of men in in this country comes from too much cooked meat. Heme iron raises mortality thirty percent. It's in all meat. Vitamin C supplement. Why would you do that? That's contraindicated. Too much vitamin C is a real problem. You should not do that. But it says who? What's what? What science are you citing, sir? When you say too much vitamin C is not good, it's not just vitamin C. Taurine, for example, is an amino acid found in parts of the animal that have the liquids. So things like blood, uh, milk. Since there is a long time between the slaughter of the animal and the time we eat it, taurine gets depleted. So then, when you cook the meat and you heat all the juices, the taurine gets destroyed even further. We're not getting very much taurine at all. Harry Serpano talks a lot about this. Uh, taurine is good for conjugating bile acids, acting as an antioxidant, reducing inflammation, managing homocysteine, and helping with anxiety and depression by modulating GABA a little bit. In a natural context, we actually have lots of taurine. Okay, and so my intake of supplemental additional taurine, typically and chronically, is none, none at all. I am not suffering any of the symptoms of taurine deficiency, Joey. Yet. I have, for several short periods of a week or so, taken some additional taurine in as an experiment to see whether... Suddenly I miraculously felt better. Maybe there was something going on that I didn't even realize. Actually, what happened was I started to exude sulfur through the skin um, and through all sorts of other places too. What? How do you know about that? Did you, uh, did you take, uh, did you go to a lab and did they test what was coming out of your skin? Like, did they take like pH tests and they, and they, they sent it to the lab and found that you had the sulfur coming out of your skin? The house... I don't think you did that. It became unlivable for others in the house very, very quickly because clearly I did not require it. Okay. So because 
some other people around you didn't like it. That's why you, uh, hmm, interesting. And rats with iron overload. Had I didn't know that was, he just, just told Joey he, he didn't do a scientific experiment, nor was that an experiment, what he just said. Rats, Joey. Seriously, son, you know better than that. You know much better than to cite a rat study and expect not to get caned on it. Yeah, well, that's what I told him too. Rat studies. Where are they on the uh, hierarchy of evidence? Animal trials. Second from the bottom. Absolutely worthless. Worthless data. Why? How come Joey doesn't have anything up here? Joey came, came to my... Uh, came, Joey, in our debate, our first debate said that uh, the uh, the meat causing, uh, the study about meat causing higher longevity, he told me it was a meta study when he gave it to me. And uh, he, he demanded that I give him an opinion of it. And so I told him that that's what follow-up debates are for. You talk about the, the studies that were presented the next time. And he told me he wasn't going to debate with me again. Um, but he told me this was a meta-analysis. So when I went home, when I looked at it afterwards, found out it was a cross-sectional, which is actually the best, the best stud, uh, data that he's come up with. But it's still down here in the red. It's still worthless, absolutely worthless, compared to Liver damage. the studies the plant-based diet community has. Significantly reduced when they added back in taurine. This is just one, another one. So we have vitamin C, taurine. Now we have the eight complex B vitamins, all of which are heat sensitive and are water soluble. Anything Again, I do not have any symptoms or signs of any deficiency of any kind to any vitamin or mineral. Yet. And uh, let's see your blood, actually. I'd like to see your blood panel. See why, you, why you're so sure of that. If it's just because you feel good, like Joey, the reasons Joey uses, or if you had several years of blood panels that you can show me that show that uh, you are not deficient in any of these things. I highly doubt you do. I'm going to go out on a limb. At all, Joey. My diet consists of basically 100% cooked ruminant meat. Well done, cooked, by the way. Cooked right through. Okay? Associated fat, additional butter, salt, water, Prior to the beginning of this year, a few days ago, I was indulging in the occasional plate of blueberries and, um... Yeah, because you guys know uh, vitamin C is important and you know that uh, carbs are important, um, but you just don't want to admit it uh, because it goes against whatever someone said once, Joe Rogan, because <laughs> it's not, not cult of Joe Rogan group think. Coffee and some alcohol here and there. Yeah, you. If your diet is so good, you don't need coffee, bro. Alcohol? Why would you take alcohol? That's carbs. Like, uh, why aren't you guys consistent? Like, that's super crazy. Why do you need coffee if, if, if all you need is meat? Why do you need coffee? Seems pretty funny. I don't drink coffee. I don't need coffee. I don't crave coffee, in the least bit. I get all the energy I need from carbs sugar pure sugar and fruit put sugar on fruit and i can outperform anyone on keto or carnivore without a doubt out without a doubt you're getting vitamin c from the from the uh, from the blueberries fine if you like you can say that however if what i'm doing is dangerous and deficient and you're right joey then within about six weeks from now, I will be in full-blown scurvy. Won't I? Might be. You can't really say in the future whether or not you're going to have something or not. So I'm not really sure what kind of argument this is. It's kind of strange. Oh, I got you. Something in the future isn't going to happen to me. <laughs> Who is this guy? This is some really crap argument. So argument. Join me in six to eight weeks and see if I'm in full But I mean, that's all there is from these guys. You know, I've yet to find someone who doesn't just use anecdote and non-science the whole time. I can tell you already how that's going to result because I have previously done significant periods of time without consuming any berries of any kind. Uh, sir, weren't you just making fun of him for using anecdote? Oh, I'm a little anecdote. Is, weren't you just saying that? You're using anecdotes nonstop. So maybe you should... Think before you talk. 
or at least not criticize someone for the same thing doing, that's hypocritical. Sir. Of any kind or anything containing any significant amount of vitamin C of any kind or a supplemental vitamin C tablet or anything like that whatsoever. No scurvy. Mm. Right. Yet that you know of. No diagnosed scurvy. Let's move on. Water soluble is heat sensitive. Most Americans are deficient in B vitamins. Because yep, so what? And by deficient, how would you define that? What is your definition for deficient, Joey? They eat no raw meat. The cooking of meat messes with the actual availability, the content of B vitamins. Okay, does that cause a symptomatic issue or a health issue of any kind? And if so, what is it? And how has that been established experimentally? We'll wait for the, uh, for the references, shall we? No. Yeah, you haven't had any references either. Super funny you keep asking them from him, but you don't give any yourself. But I know that you know that you don't have any references because none exist in science that back up any of these things you're saying. There's also minerals like sodium, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, manganese, copper. Yep, all of which. I all of which you can get. Whole plant-based diet. I have perfectly adequate supplies and stores of no deficiencies or symptoms or signs of any deficiencies. How do you know, sir? Let's see your blood panels. Let's see several years of blood panels. Let's see you on the standard diet. Let's see your baseline on the standard diet. Let's see your baseline after you went carnivore. Let's see what it is now. And there we go. Let's uh, see your oral glucose test. That's what I'm more interested in seeing. Oral glucose test. That's the best test for figuring out how your blood glucose is. As the study points out, to clarify the cooking losses, you will fail without a doubt. Girls. Various food materials were analyzed before and after cooking in the following results. That means you have diabetes. Were obtained. Number one, do not set goals. Let me just ask you something. When since that last time you set a New Year's resolution? The mineral content of cooked Bro, just pay for YouTube premium. Good Lord. Foods in mass cooking were on average about 60 to 70% of those in raw or uncooked foods. So? Okay, there you go. We're well, do we go what, Joey? So what? Do we have a whole bunch of people eating cooked muscle meat based carnivore diets who are falling over dead or exhibiting problems based around scurvy or vitamin deficiencies or mineral deficiencies? Yes, we do. We do. Lots. I made a video about a guy who had to quit the carnivore. Seems of any kind. No, we don't. These people want you to just trust them and, and ignore doctors and ignore a hundred years of science. And just, oh, don't worry, all, the, all that cholesterol is fine. You know, it's, it's completely okay. Even though studies have shown that lowering your cholesterol raises mortality. Ugo, you're just making shit up. Ooh, he's getting mad. What's next? Losing minerals as well when we cook. People get mad. He's, he's like, you're doing what I do. I'm getting mad. Uh, it's even shown that phosphorus cauterization process begins at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, yeah, so what? I which is why they look to phosphorous in milk to see if it still exists, right? So when they pasteurize milk, they check the phosphorous content to make sure all of it is completely destroyed. So that way they know that it's been pasteurized, right? Yes, yeah, so what? They look to nutrient destruction to actually extrapolate whether or not this milk has had the stuff destroyed. Yes, yeah, so what? Who, who is suggesting that pasteurized milk is a good idea? I'm not. Is it properly pasteurized? You've said that. Perhaps you should have had a plan before you started your video, Joey. It's, it's kind of funny when you think about that, right? Um, also, fast-level vitamins, A, D, and E are 15 to 70% destroyed, I believe at 300. When Joey says it's kind of funny when you think that, he's meaning people are so fucking stupid, yet he has nothing to back up any of his, his facts. And look at this face. <laughs> Joey's got some really, Joey's got the, the, the keto eye, the carnivore eye. Almost all ketos and carnivores have these dead, tired looking eyes, man. And that's from lack of carbohydrate, our, our natural, purest, most efficient source of fuel. 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So what? Show me some people who are demonstrably deficient, who eat nothing but cooked muscle meat and associated fat, etc., i.e. a sensible, perfectly normal, perfectly natural carnivorous diet. Should we wait? Yeah, let's wait for your blood work so we can actually prove that you're actually healthy because just because you're saying you do it, isn't proof of anything. Just because you're alive here isn't proof that you're healthy. Nope. Anecdote, 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 anecdote. I'm gonna make fun of Joey for anecdote using anecdotes, but I'm gonna use anecdotes in my all uh, my arguments. Um, vitamin K is stable, but you have AD and E, which are denatured and not as usable for us. And yet still we get enough. Yeah. Also, enzymes are destroyed at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Some are, yeah. So enzymes are basically protein structures that help yes. us use nutrients. No. Enzymes that exist in meat are enzymes that were encoded for by that animal for its purposes. Exactly, Joey. 
Joey thinks that because nut meat is nutrient dense, that is nutrient nutritious for humans. And that is not how things work. The enzymes we require in our bodies to undertake our metabolic processes are encoded for in our genes, and they are made from proteins that we eat. We don't need to have exogenous enzymes that existed in the animal. Sorry about that. Exactly. Uh, Joey, what's next? If we destroy all the enzymes by cooking our food, what happens is we need the pancreas to secrete enzymes, which exhaust the pancreas and tires it out. Absolute fucking nonsense, Joey. Rubbish. That's what it's supposed to do. That's its role. It's like saying, never exercise, never elevate your heartbeat at all because that will exhaust your heart. Okay. All of these are very, very important to consider. No, they're not, Joey. They're just noise coming. Joey has a chat, and he also has his his uh all his facts. He looks down at them, and then he looks up in the air like he's thinking, because he wants you to think he's thinking of it all off the top of his head when he's really looking down at his notes and a chat. I mean, from a basically completely inexperienced young man who has got his ego out of whack and has forgotten That's entirely true. where his place in the carnival community actually is. And what role it is that he has imagined to play within this community. Which is at the bottom. Community for the betterment of all of us. You've completely lost the plot. He's got a disingenuous channel that's simply vegan bashing and car other carnivore bashing. What's on that? Okay. Very disappointing. It's nothing health related. Say, oh, well, we can make our own enzymes. This is stressful. We have the enzyme. No, it isn't. For goodness sake. In meat and raw meat, I can help digest it for us. Also, the stomach acid required to digest raw meat significantly less than cooked meat. So, your stomach acidity adjusts in order to subserve here we are back to why jo joey got our second debate shut down because he kept beating this idea into the ground and he was absolutely wrong he showed me a clinical trial that said that that uh at, stomach acid was only one or two and everything else said it, it can be one two three four five and so joey just kept beating this idea into the ground until the moderator was like look i'm stopping this debate there's no point in going any farther um, you know, obviously Joey didn't show up to do two debate again. He changed the premise and then just wanted to argue these these uh, argue points. Basically, he wasn't accepting the evidence that I gave him that was far uh, higher quality evidence than the evidence he was giving me. So the the debate was over basically because he wouldn't concede. What the requirements are at that time? So. If you're eating only cooked meat, it's just more of a burden on the body to produce more stomach acid. That's not a burden. That's a simple matter of pumping chloride ions across the membrane. There's also toxic byproducts uh -huh. in cooked meat uh -huh. that people tend to not really explain. Uh -huh. And we've known forever about advanced bacteria and products via the Meyer reaction, right? And, people and yet, we do not see an increase meaningfully at all in mortality rates, cancer rates, which is what they are supposed to be a problem regarding, in populations of people who eat cooked versus raw meat or who eat meat at all. Sure they do. Versus those who don't. Sure they do. Where's the science you have for that, sir? Where's the science? So he's into that one, Joey. We're done with that one. What's next? People like to say, well, you don't want to eat AGEs, uh, so you avoid toasting your bread or whatever. How about the meat? Like when you put a sear and you have that crust, that's just advanced glycation end products. That's all that it is. No, it isn't. In fact, there will be some advanced glycation end products in that, but who's to say that's problematic? A certain amount is hormetic. So there's a clear logical disconnect here when people... Eat there's a clear logical disconnect when a 19-year-old kid with absolutely no training and no idea of what he's talking about whatsoever claims authority in an area that he has no business claiming authority in and makes a bunch of ridiculous statements without any support for them whatsoever. Yeah. That is what the logical disconnect That's is. That's right. Concerned. That's what okay. I told him. On diet and they say, well, this is great because I'm not eating the carbohydrates that are going to cause advanced glycation and products in the body. But because they do vastly more than eating any amount of meat. When they're consuming cooked meat that has advanced glycation and products. Much, much less than what they will get from consuming carbohydrates. Um, cooked or otherwise. God, it's still right, so, so something's slow. not quite right there. Yeah, what's not quite right there, Joey, is your level of knowledge in this particular field and your understanding of this field and your ego, son. Um, so back to the point. You have heterocyclic amines from protein and you have lipid peroxide from fat. Just to name several. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to do a video on this, but oh, I, God, I can't wait. I think one reason also Aldino does better is... <laughs> so if there was any doubt that Joey's finished, done in this space, no longer relevant, no longer worth listening to at all, there it is. He's going to praise Paul Saladino and suggest that Paul Saladino is doing better. He is. Finished, Joey. He's done. Of course he is. Sorry about that, son. Of course, pal of course he's doing better. He's eating fruits and vegetables now. Of course he's doing better. <laughs> oh my god, are you serious? Are we really hearing this, boys and girls? Wow. Which where's the science, sir, to back up what you're saying? That fruits and vegetables are toxic. Where's the science? Where's the metadata? 
seem to have the effect of buffering <clears throat> some of those negative properties of cooked meat. Based on what, Joey? Where did you get that from? What science underpins that ridiculous? What science do you get all your shit from? Probably the same place Joey's getting his. Fine. Shall we wait? I think not, again. Ogenous Wonder Planets talks about- <sighs> Right. Minus another 10,000 points of credibility. Arginus. <laughs> A dead actor. This in his book, We Want to Live, which I would recommend to you all. On what basis, Joey? What basis would you have to recommend a book about nutrition or physiology or anything related to human health? At all. Heterocyclic amines and lipid peroxide are proven carcinogens. No, they are not, Joey. Fox. Goodness gracious me. Wow, you've lost the plot some. Proven. No. Fox. If you don't eat cooked meat, you simply don't get them. Fox again. Probiotic cultures are also very delicate and cannot live above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, as with virtually all bacteria and yeast. And yet, most of us that eat a carnivorous diet based on solely cooked meat have perfectly healthy, perfectly balanced micro... Most of us? That's a blanketing generalization. And you have no science to back up this statement. Biota. Anecdote. Personal anecdote, opinion, groupthink have perfect bowel function on a daily basis and have no problems in that regard. Really? Because Joey says he, he shits four times a week. That's not perfect bowel, bowel movement, bro. It's almost as if you don't know what you're talking about, Joey. People are afraid of bacteria. No, we need bacteria. We don't have a four-chambered stomach that can make our own bacteria to digest food. We need the bacteria. So now you're suggesting that the four-chambered stomach creatures, uh, the, those, um, those ruminant animals, are making their own bacteria? No, son. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> and making their own. Good. Bacteria from the meat to aid in digestion, which would be preserved in its raw form. Therefore, the cooked meat is way, way less digestible. It isn't, though. I digest my meat perfectly adequately on a daily basis. What's next? To bring this all together and show that what I'm saying is not merely speculative. It is, though, Joey. It's just absolute nonsense. It's buffoonery. It's childish, ridiculous, nonsensical rubbish. We can observe that no hunter-gatherers or primitive societies' cultures eat only cooked meat. That's not true. According to who? Who observed? Who? <laughs> Joey loves... Joey told me in my debate, in our first debate, he said that, that he knew psychologically that hunter-gatherers back in primal times didn't get psychological problems from killing animals. And I was like, what? How do you know that? He said, everyone knows this. And I said, what? They had therapists back then psychologically evaluating hunter gatherers? He just sit there and just sat there and looked funny. Crickets. Um, so you look, look back in time, like it's all raw dairy. It's lots and lots of raw meat incorporated. No, that's not true either, Joey. There are several tribes that do live the way you're suggesting. But several tribes does not make a representative sample of humanity. And, and those tribes don't live past 60. Humanities. Humans have the potential to live to be 150. Why would you want to live past... Why would you take the diet of people who don't live past 60? Historical nutritional practices. Created into the diet. We're not eating fully cooked meat. This is a new diet. Like, You've said that already. It was wrong the first time and it's still wrong. I started... I went carnivore because I thought it was the most ancestral. It's not. Yes, it is. Eating only cooked meat is not a natural diet. Ancestral? What? Are you... Are you... Uh, are you <laughs> Oh, are you a liver king guy or something? Appealing to tradition? Oh, we've done it. We did it a long time ago. That means we need to do it now. That's it. Yes, it is. Still. A million years of it. By any means. Yes, still. A million years of it. You were eating lots of cooked meat throughout history. Cite the science, sir. This is what humans need to thrive. We need raw meat. No, we don't. Not at all. Nope. We so don't. I agree the there. Francis Pottinger is also quite convincing. Oh, God. This gets worse and worse, doesn't it, boys and girls? Worse yeah, worse you guys worse. are ridiculous. He, I believe, tested on around 900 cats. There you go. Cats. <laughs> Bart, now you understand what it feels like to be like me and to watch you guys talk about this comp pure conjecture and anti-science. You understand Rats now. and cats and dead actors and repeating things that are wrong sufficient times to make people who are stupid believe that you might be right. Either raw dairy, raw meat, or... That cats. is true. ...strasarium cooked meat. And what he found was that the cats... Well, who cares, Joey? They're cats. Do we move on? Were um, very uh, poorly nourished and very unhealthy when they. Cats haven't been. Where did we find out 
cat tests are on the uh, legitimacy stage of, of, of science. Animal trials. Woo! So uh, he's, just, he's citing like a 70-year-old animal trial. Like, was it ever updated? <laughs> like, geez, bro. Like, there's nothing more worthless than an outdated animal trial. Cooking their meat for a million years, Joey. And we we're not cats. We're not cats. We're not cats. Have. Okay. Cats also once weaned off their mother's milk. Don't drink milk unless they're fed milk by humans. You shouldn't do that, by the way. Eat the cooked diets. Now, of course, cats actually require taurine as an essential nutrient, and humans don't. So it's very likely. Ah. <laughs> that might be why we're not short. Good. That the taurine depletion in the cooked foods cause the cats to physically degenerate. It's almost as if cats haven't evolved eating cooked meat for a million years, whereas humans fucking have. Okay. They couldn't get fertile. They were just horribly unhealthy. And... So cats didn't, but humans did, and humans did, but cats didn't. Just Which is form. it? Which is it, you guys? Do vegans get fat when they go vegan, or do they get skinny? Which is it, guys? It was bad for It was really, really bad for them. And... Goodness gracious, Joey. Have a plan. Have a script if you if you can't get these ideas out. Joey has no plans and no scripts. He showed up to two two of my debates. The second debate, I fully prepared him for it, and he still showed up with no data. In a, in a Completely unprepared with no plan, but his usual spiel he gives in every single video. Cogent fashion, without just this waffle and inanity. Have a script. Maybe ask someone with some knowledge to check it before you make your video. We can say that for humans. Don't ask me, son. Since, I mean, while we are different than cats and we don't have our touring requirement, eating too much cooked meat will cause us to degenerate as well. But only it doesn't. So, no, Joey, wrong again. At least at a faster rate than we would if we were to consume. Okay, what evidence do you base that on? What experiments on genetically identical twins can you point to that shows that? <sighs> Honestly, son. Raw foods. You aren't doing that much better, Mr. K. Um, now... Something else that people like to point to when justifying the consumption of cooked meat. We don't need to justify it. Exclusively, is the physiques of Sean. Of course you need to justify it. Baker and Anthony Chafee, who look very, very good, look very, very healthy. Look, here we go. I tried to get Joey to, uh, in the debate, to agree on some person who he thought was healthy. And he refused. He was like, no, because he knows when he's debating a vegan, every person he says that's going to look healthy to him is on steroids. This guy, Chaffee, is on steroids. Carnivore Doctor is on steroids. Dr. Baker on steroids. Joey, who is 19, doesn't know what someone looks like who's on steroids. He's obsessed with this false, false stereotype of the false male body that, that, that was started that's not natural. Doing steroids and being insanely buff is not natural, nor is it necessary or needed in our society these days. Uses lots of resources. Lot, uses lots of money. You got to spend a lot of money on food. You got to eat a lot. You got to work out a lot. What? Just to do what? Just to have a have a aesthetic physique a, a so, a, that, that our society has agreed from from brainwashing for decades that that's that's the ideal male body. Like, give me a break, bro. So what? So I, N equals two. So what? I'm saying it's true that Rami is best. Well, why are they so fit? The reason they do well is because they have elite genetics. Now, oh, right, of course. Elite genetics. Being buff does not mean you are fit. Elite genetics and steroids, bro. That's what it is. There's a massive variation in a person's ability to expunge toxins, to regulate electrolytes, to regulate nutrient stores, so on and so forth. So can you please point us, Joey, to your published genetic analysis of Drs. Baker and Chafee, please? Yeah. <laughs> And the, the guys that started this whole movement. So you're literally debunking your whole movement. Fucking hell. You can look at them and realize that from Anthony Chafee's 6'3 height and very developed physique. Well, hang on. Steroids. Just because he's 6'3 doesn't mean he would be developed. Had he not worked really hard to become developed at 6'3? That makes no... Holy sh... You haven't done a genetic analysis on oh. either of these two gentlemen. Joey, what you're saying here is complete rubbish. You have no basis to say this. Just like everything else you've said in this video, it's based on absolutely nothing whatsoever. Wow.
and proportional face, just all these markers of gen good genetics. Now you know what I deal with, Bart. Sean Baker's stature at, I believe, 6'5". They are genetically gifted. You can tell. Just tall doesn't mean you're genetically gifted. It means you're tall. No. Yeah, Sean exactly. Baker has the physique he has because he's worked at it for 40-something years, son, on a daily basis. Anthony Chafee, the same thing. He's been working at his physique longer than you've been alive. Yeah, well, Joe, you can see, you can tell by looking at the title of Joey's videos. Like, he, he has a video of some buff guy, and it's all, Carnivore diet gave this man his physique. And it's like, no, working out, narcissistically working out gave him that physique. And steroids. <laughs> yeah, sure, the nutrition had something to do with it. He obviously needed a lot of protein, but steroids and a narcissistic drive to to have that uh body is what got him that but joey thinks it's all from carnivore and eating meat huh? joey doesn't think there are any v buff vegans out there that are literally like strong men champion strong men and body bodybuilders that are vegan that are at work son something that you at some point in your life will come into contact with no you want joey's very privileged he lives in basically lives in beverly hills Joey can eat carnivore for the rest of his life, but most people can't. Joey can afford it because he's privileged. All right. It'd be a rude shock for you, I imagine. Just because people do well with a cooked meat diet for some time, it doesn't mean that it's optimal. People Joey's also... still living at his parents' house. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It doesn't mean that it's dangerous and destitute, which is what you are implying in this video. Because it's not. Oh, it most definitely is. People do well on vegan diets for a period of time. Well, for a very short period of time. Really? 20, 20 plus years here, bro. Endurance cyclist. Cardio for days. I'm eight years in and I'm doing better than I've ever done with my health. My How do you know? What's your, what's your marker for that? Can you beat me in a race? I doubt it. Health is still not 100% of what it should be, perhaps. If you're not taking carbs, you will not beat me in any physical race. That is, that is not something that's learned. Like Joey ch challenged me to a soccer, a soccer match, which that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking, you take something neither of us do and make us go do it. I will beat you 10 times out of nine, nine out of 10 times because I, because I have glycogen stores and I can instantly replenish them with carbs. But in most aspects of metrics of overall health, whatever that means, I would be far in advance of most of my peers at my age. Nonsense. Let's see your blood work, bro. Let's see it. We'll compare. You look like you're probably my age, although I look quite a bit younger than you. And I'm eight years into a diet consisting almost entirely of cooked muscle. And I am 20 plus years into a diet experience being, di being vegan, vegetarian for first 15 years of my life and a carnivore and keto i've done it all <laughs> you haven't done it all so mate i came back to veganism after being carnivore Ooh, does that melt your brain you never heard that one before huh how long should i wait for this detriment joey how long is it going to take do you think oh it, it'll creep up most of you, most, most, uh, carnivores aren't being honest anyway. They're, they're carving up for sure. They're binge carving up every once in a while, for sure. Without a doubt. To say something no, that was an actual question, Joey. Do you think, or do you just open your mouth and say whatever you feel like? You have the intelligence. You have the gift of the gap. No, he doesn't. You have the articulate nature that you need. He has, he has a vocabulary. You need to do well. But you need to engage your But he doesn't know how to use it. Brain. And you haven't done he it. most definitely doesn't know how to debate or discuss scientifically anything. In this video, this has been absolutely fucking disgraceful. Every one of his videos are like this, bro. I don't know if you've noticed. If anyone, if any, if anything, this is a better video of his. You should watch some other of his videos. They're horrible. They're absolutely laughable. This is an indulgence. Watches watches debate with or watches discussion with Varus Ahmad. Watch him and him and this guy just comp Oh, you would die. I mean, this is a smear on you, Joey. This video. You should be embarrassed that you made a video this bad. This lacking. This destitute. YouTube channel, not one video, his whole channel.
and you should be ashamed of yourself for the lack of respect that you are showing to a number of well-known, well-credentialed, well-knowledgeable, well-experienced. Oh, you're just mad because he's speaking out against a couple of you guys, huh? He's going against the Joe Rogan cult of Rogan group think a little bit, and you're you're not liking that. It's commentators in this area, in your little slur video here. The very same people that helped you succeed in building your channel from, from basically nothing. Right. You reap what you sow, son. Look out for that. It's good for a person at a period of time. It doesn't make the diet optimal by any means. All these things are relative, right? And this is a point I've been trying to stress. These things are all relative. If you look at a cooked carnivore diet relative to a standard diet, it's, it's an incredibly good diet, an, an amazing diet relative to a standard one. But if you look at a cooked carnivore diet relative to a diet that incorporates lots and lots of raw meat, it's been almost an hour and I got no response from Joey. I sent him a picture of this video and said, told you so. Because the last time we talked, I was like, your people are going to turn against you. <laughs> 544. It's now 7. It's now 711 at 544. I texted him. Told you so. He usually immediately responses to, to, to every text I've sent him. He immediately responds. So... He obviously well, doesn't like that. The same level. Okay, we'll prove it. He's not having a good day. After Nutrivor killed him and I killed him twice, just destroyed the kid. Like, he's been getting his ass handed to him all month. He's not having a very good month. Show us some data. He literally got thrown off of a, de a, a moderated debate for not following the rules of debate and trying to be argumentative to the, to the moderator. To underpin that claim. It does not exist, Joey. This is your opinion. And all of this is your opinion. Both of your guys. It's all opinion, sir. It's based on absolutely nothing. You still have brought nothing. This is not even close. You said that already, Mr. Brain Fog. We should all be teaming up. I think you need Lipemia. You probably, you, you definitely have it too. As well as diabetes. It's where the blood... The blood gets so saturated with fat that all your 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 insulin receptors and all the receptors sending uh, uh, sending oxygen to the brain they're all clogged up and they're not working right. It's from all that fat. You need to get more sleep. Lipemia. Look it up. At your age, son, people need a lot more sleep. I think I don't think you're getting enough. Well, maybe there's some nutrient issues as well. Uh, he's definitely uh, not getting enough fiber either. He only shits four, four times a week. Well, this is why you're suffering um, from quite the level of... Which is not healthy. ...brain fog that you clearly are. There's, there's quite a bit of... I agree with the brain fog. fog. Blech. The brain fog, though. That's definitely, you know, so, a factor with all of these keto carnivore influencers. You know, and that's that's only if they're actually doing the diet. If they're not doing the diet, then they're not, they're, you know, then they are getting carbs and they're not, you know... They're having okay energy, and they're not, um, yeah. Vision of grandeur going on there with you. There's, there's really quite an ego problem here that needs to be brought back into line by some. Same with you. Body somehow. Perhaps this video helps to get the ball rolling. Your ego is so large that you believe all your anecdotes and don't believe Joey's simply because he's younger than you. I hope that um, other influencers and creators that you've bagged on today who have helped you to build your channel from nothing, Joey, I hope they too do also weigh in and give their opinion of your yep. nonsense here today. Yep. I think that probably most of them are uh, pretty lame. The clients who are, who will just turn you. I mean, I'm not not like a part of that scene, but like stabbing a bunch of people in the back who helped you build your channel is pretty pretty screwed up. Not very smart, that's for sure. And if everyone thinks Joey's so intelligent, and so smart, why would he go and just just st take stabs in the dark and stab? the people in the back that helped him the most. It's a good point. You know, it's not very smart and it is pretty brain foggy thing to do. Cheek and just ignore you. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. That's their prerogative, of course, to do that. But yeah, this has been very, very disappointing, son. Together to fight against big agriculture, to fight against monocropping and these agricultural strategies that are destroying our health instead of fighting against other diets like paleo or whatever. Big agriculture, you wouldn't have meat to eat if agriculture was gone 80 percent of the the plants grown in this country go towards your animal feed 
So uh, I don't know what you'd be trying to do, trying to get rid of. You're trying to promote. You're trying to tell everyone that they're supposed to eat more meat, but then you're getting rid of big ag. Like, I'm confused. Wait, I don't think this is the right approach. I think we should all be advocating for organic foods together. No. It'd be had, as I said earlier. This organic is a marketing term. There's nothing magnificent, magical, or special about organic. And the diet wars maybe a bit of a distraction. And I'm still going to go at vegans. I'm still going to do my vegan reaction videos. Of course you're going to go at vegans. That's all you do. Like I've been saying, you don't have a health channel. You have an anti-vegan channel. And since you've gone through all the the uh, the frugivores, that because there's only like 20 of them, you made like 10 videos about 20 people that exist on the planet. And... um. Now you've, you've gone through a couple of vegans. Now you're going to attack your own people. This is how self-destructive your thinking is, Joey. Not very intelligent. Because I think veganism is just a crime. <laughs> I'll tell you what's another crime, Joey, is you claiming to represent the carnival side, putting yourself out there, undertaking... That's what I told him! ...making debates that you had no business undertaking with no preparation whatsoever and making both yourself and us look foolish. Ah! That was criminal. Did Bart watch my video? A bunch of people tagged him. People were tagging him in my video several days before this came out. And he may have seen the Nutrivore video too. Like, Joey got annihilated by Nutrivore. Watch Nutrivore versus CC. Like, absolutely destroyed, where Joey just simply left the debate. He's like, okay, you're a lot better debater than me. I'm just going to leave now, and left with his tail between his legs. Like, and he left, to, and he lost to, like, not even, I mean, it was a really good, uh, really good argument. But, like, still, Nutrivore could have gone way, not, way harder on the kid. And Nutrivore was very polite, and Joey just absolutely could not hang. So it'd be pr pretty funny if, if if Bart watched these videos. You're not in a position to take these debates on. Nope. You were nope. Not at all. That's what I told Joey. I told him, dude, I'm here to tell you. I'm trying to help you, bro. I'm trying to help you. Like, you should not be doing these debates. Harley, uh, Durian Rider, when you interview Durian Rider, he's like, man, you sure have some ball d balls doing these debates. I can't get anyone to anyone from the carnivore or keto crowd to debate me because they're all too smart. They know better than to debate someone in a field where they have zero scientific evidence. Joey thinks he has tons of scientific evidence because of a, a few clinical trials that have been circulated in the, in the carnivore community. And that's not how it works. There's different degrees, and you know, I've showed you the pyramid five times now. Like, Joey doesn't even know this pyramid. I, he, Joey made me explain the pyramid to him in our debate. Like, that was the, basically one of the last things we talked about before the dude threw, shut the debate down. To look silly. Yeah, real silly. Another very and then he puts in the titles of the videos that the people he's debating look silly when it's it's pure projecting. It's pure projecting. It's inconsistent contradictions and projecting. That's all I see on Joey's channel. Very disappointing outcome of recent Joey videos. Yeah, um, yep. The, yep. the advocation of veganism is horrible. I still eat basically all raw meat, so I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not carnivore. The, uh, so science is horrible. Joey just said. The plant-based diet has been found by the highest quality of meta studies to lows more, lower mortality. So how is that criminal? Anymore, anything like that. You... Science versus your pseudoscience, your conjecture, your, your non sequiturs, your appeals to authority, your appeals to tradition, appeals to the crowd. Raw meat, raw milk, raw dairy, right? I eat raw eggs. So I'm not saying that I'm straying from a carnivore diet. I'm just saying that there are... All right, so I heard recently, Joey, that you reported eating a significant amount of fruit and honey as well on the basis that you've now started to praise Fruity Honey Boy. And funnily enough, suddenly you're now hawking organ supplements as well. I just asked Joey about that in our debate. Well, what are I'm confused about what you are exactly because you're saying you're carnivore, but you aren't representing carnivore and then you're eating... F Fruit, you said sometimes you eat fruit and milk's not carnivore. That's for sure. 
Or eggs even? I mean, like... No, I wonder how that came about. Mm. Are better ways to get the nation healthy than to say everyone, eat only meat, eat only cooked meat. Because my great-grandparents, my great-grandmother actually lived till... Who said eat only cooked meat? I didn't. I said I only eat cooked meat. That doesn't cause me any problem of any kind. I don't like the idea of... Prove that, sir. Let's see your blood work. Raw meat. I don't want to eat raw meat. I'm not going to eat raw meat. I don't believe that raw meat, all of that aside, is significantly better in quality, nutritionally, than cooked meat. It's not. But at no time did I say only eat, both crap. eat raw meat, boys and girls. If you want to eat raw meat, you fill your boots up. That's no skin off my nose whatsoever. 106 years old. And she didn't eat carnivore. So another anecdote, okay. I mean, she ate some raw meat. She ate cooked meat. She ate organs. All that so stuff. what? Stuff lived a very calm and happy life. I would be, I would highly doubt Joey's grandma ate organ meat. So <laughs> what? For the most part, until, of course, you go to the retirement home and things just go south from there because of the food that they give you. But, you know, generally, as long as you eat organic foods, you can be very healthy. Uh, retirement homes are very, very much, there are selected diets for people in retirement homes. Joey has no life experience, so he wouldn't know that. You know, I, no, they don't have to be organic. And organic is a buzz term. It's a sales yeah, marketing It's a marketing strategy, strategy Joey, to I make said. you believe that the quality of the stuff under this banner of organicnessness is better somehow. You've been had. It's not. It still came from the same planet, the same polluted planet. It has the same issues ostensibly as other things. Don't be a fool. Well, don't be so much of a fool. Pull back the foolishness, some. I, I hope what I've said makes sense. No, it doesn't, Joey. It's been absolute rancid, pustulous garbage from start <laughs> to finish. It's been the ramblings of a boy who's basically lost the plot. You need to pull your head in, wind your neck in, start again, ask for forgiveness, both from your viewership and also from some of the major um, influencers and commentators in this area who are credentialed, knowledgeable, experienced in life and in this area. You're young enough. We'll accept that you made a mistake, a series of mistakes in the last few weeks. We can wipe the slate clean. Yeah, me too, Joey. Apologize to me too. And you can start again. But you Wasting my time twice, not showing up, not respecting the person you're debating enough to show up prepared and, actual, and actually use the rules of debate and know them. I told him in our first debate, I was like, next time you need to be more prepared. You need to study these, these studies that I'm sending you find problems in them when we come back I'll, I'll look at the studies you gave me i'll find the problems next time we debate we'll talk about them next time we debate shows up he repeats everything from our first debate brings nothing new and brings no studies disrespectful little shit with a big ego i was all an apology make it happen i'll i'll, I'll accept jo joey's apology maybe the rest of you you know the drill don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out Join me next time when someone else will be wrong on the interwebs. Because it doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon, does it, boys and girls? No. Bro, you're super wrong a bunch of times, so... You know, if you want to debate, hit me up. Oh, see you then. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty hilarious. Basically, every single thing I said to Joey... You can watch the debate, our first debate. Every single thing I said to Joey, this guy just confirmed, and this guy's on Joey's team. Thank you, Bart. That was great. I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, peace.